All right, let me get our uh, slideshow, but I want to make sure it's recording right over here. Okay, good. Okay, let me see. Let me put our slideshow. Nice, that's good. August 28, 2024. All right, good evening once again. How's everybody? Uh, we still have our warm weather, 105, 104, but we'll bear with that one. It's almost September. It's Sunday, uh, Sunday is going to be September 1. So thank you guys once again for your positive attitude towards the Word of God. And um, again, there's so much things to do outside. Uh, people that I invited, you know, um, just invite people. God will get their attention. Uh, I'm so glad. I'm so blessed for your presence uh, every, you know, every Wednesday. And for those people who listen to our YouTube channel also, I tried to fix some of my, uh, in my channel. And I didn't even realize uh, there's 51 subscriber already. You know, that uh, subscriber, you know, we only started at eight subscriber. It's just us, I think. But now it went to 51. But I thank you guys for, you know, for your attitude also for subscribing this. And this is not mine. I didn't ask for money for this. I didn't ask <coughs> Google for to pay me for this. But I want this to be out there. You know, the word of God needs to be out there. And, and of course, uh, the nature of our time today, we have different schedules. Um, some of us, we have different time. Uh, our brothers and sisters in the Philippines, we have different time in in America. So this could be our frame, uh, our references, you know, to go back to our Bible study. Uh, I don't want them to lip out on, on, on what we are doing here in, in Las Vegas, in America. I want them also to hear uh, what we are doing here, that we continually um, serving the Lord here in America, in spite of Many people, they call our city a sin city, you know, but it's, it's the people, it's the sinner, not the city. The city is nice. You know, when you come over here, Las Vegas, is, there's so many churches. You know, when you go around, there's so many churches out there. When my father-in-law came over here, he was surprised because what we heard out there uh, back home is, is really bad. Las Vegas is just a, a bad entertainment city. But when you when you go outside on the strip, a lot of churches out there. There's a lot of churches, and um, one of that is us over here locally uh, in Rohide. But again, thank you guys once again for your presence tonight. Um, it's uh, it's very encouraging. Uh, your presence is always encouragement. You know, um, for those people who listen to our YouTube channel, also uh, God bless you uh, wherever you are around the globe. I don't, I don't have to enumerate names because uh, I know, thank you guys, the Holy Spirit, God knows uh, you are studying also with us. Uh, God bless you uh, with all the understanding that the Holy Spirit will give you. And um, continue to pray uh, for our nation, the United States of America, and especially for our military men and women who fight for our freedom in this country. <clears throat> and um, pray for our nation, for especially for the coming election. Uh, it's almost there. It's it's getting intense now. <laughs> you know, did you see the uh, election that we have? You know, <clears throat> they're they're fighting. They're really fighting. But you know, God controls history. He's the one who controls the history. No matter what happens in this life, He's the one who <clears throat> who holds the sovereign will of God. Uh, the perfect man to be on that pedestal. Uh, again, uh, continue to pray also for our brothers and sisters in the Philippines, in Hawaii, here in Las Vegas, uh, brothers and sisters in Canada, uh, my friends in Japan. <clears throat> uh, we continually pray for them. You know, they may not know that, okay? They may not know that. Uh, you may not know also that someone's praying for you. You know, that's why every time I, you know, I stand before God. I know that someone's praying for me, whoever that is. I'm so glad that's part of my prayer that I'm so thankful that someone's praying for me. You know, it's not just uh, uh, in the Philippines. They just last Sunday, they just celebrated the pastor's day, you know, the pastor's day. So 
But it, it, everything, it's it's all about, you know, the praise and glory before it, it's, it belongs to the Lord. And and um, they're celebrating the, the pastoral day. They give the appreciation for their pastor. But again, um, our job is not done yet. Because we know when are we going to receive our rewards one day, okay? And I know when I'm going to re receive my rewards one day, when we see face-to-face -to -face with the Lord in the Bema Seed Judgment. Again, um, continue to pray for uh, our leader. And over here also, Uncle Ed, uh, he's in, the, um, in Davao. So let's continue to pray for his trip over there also. He can be the, uh, the, he can be the channel of blessing. And um, some of our brothers and sisters in, in especially in Panabo Church, um, uh, some of in Davao City, also some of our friends, relatives, uh, family. Now tonight, before we continue with our Bible study, <clears throat> uh, I'll give you a moment of silence to uh, make your own way before the Lord. If you sin against God, use First John one nine. <laughs> first John one nine. What did this First John one nine say? If you confess your sins. He is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you for all unrighteousness. So with your heads bow and let's pray. <clears throat> Good evening, Heavenly Father. We thank you so much for another day that we were about to have our fellowship, Father, with your word. The Bible talks about in the book of John that God is a spirit. Therefore, we must worship him in spirit and in truth. That's in the sphere of the spirit father and the word of god this is the highest form of worship any alleged worship is just the bottom line father some of that is just giving is part of worship singing is part of worship but but the highest form of worship is what we are doing now uh thank you so much father for the provision that you provide for us our vehicle to come over here um the food the air that we breathe the sunshine in the morning that we are thankful for all these things father that you gave for each one of us and that's why <clears throat> some says that let everything let everything that has breath must praise the lord um we are breathing and therefore we must praise you father because of who and what you are your character thank you so much father for <clears throat> my family loved ones friends that are here tonight we ask the Holy Spirit to illuminate our hearts and mind with your with the revealed truth so that we can comprehend and apprehend the word of God, Father, and we can apply this in our daily life, Father, in our situation, in, in, in this dirty stinking here and now. Life is tough. The more it is tough without the word of God, because you design the life, Father, in your way. Uh, with this everything tonight, Father, we ask your name and we give you back the glory and honor. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. All right. Thank you guys once again. Um, tonight, thank you for your presence. Uh, before we begin with this one, uh, let's go back to our diagram last week. We are still studying about positional truth. This is one of the most important topic when it comes to the foundational doctrine. Uh, like I encouraged so many believers before that, you know, this is study, um, as, as much as possible, don't ever miss the study. Because like this is studies that we have right now, the cross, the cross and the two circle. I don't know when we're going to go back on this topic again, unless we have to go back this, you ask question and I can just go back this one. Um, I can't even... Um, remember when was the last time we studied this that's why it's so important not to miss the bible study because of so much um topic in the word of god that we can we can study on you know there's so many things i can't even remember maybe five years ago uh i i remember the one thing i remember it was me and kuya sam we started this during the pandemic it was just me and kuya sam <laughs> I remember that uh, every morning. So I opened the garage and, um, you know, the, I am so glad we have our Zoom that time, Kuya Sam. Yeah. But that's the last time I remember that we studied this thing. But I'm, I'm going to go back. Let's go back to this thing again. And I want you to get this. Um, we study about the, the positional truth. <clears throat> this is the, the cross and the two circle over here. 
the cross represents the moment that you are saying, okay? Assuming that we are here in this room, you are safe. And for all those people who listen to our YouTube channel, assuming that you are safe. If you're not safe, all you have to do is faith alone in Christ alone. Sin is not the issue. The issue is your attitude towards the Lord Jesus Christ and the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, which is the good news. The good news is Jesus, he loves you so much. He died. He was buried. And he went back to life. That's the gospel of Paul. That's the grace gospel. If you believe that, you are now the Holy Spirit. You see this arrow? He baptizes you on the top circle. The Holy Spirit puts you on the top circle. The, the top circle, we call this position in Christ. This is your position. We call this positional truth. So this is very important. That's your position in Christ. And that position of the status of every born again believer, it's always permanent. God cannot erase it. No one can erase that, not even Satan. Because that is the, um, the promise of God. The Holy Spirit places you on the top circle. That's your position in the Lord. Okay. Now that's the top circle over here. God did not call you yet the moment you are saved you didn't die yet okay the moment you accepted the lord jesus christ you we are still here breathing because god has a purpose in everyone's life that's what we call the bottom circle okay the bottom circle is what we call our condition our fellowship okay the bottom circle this is where we are living experientially we call this spirituality, spirituality. That's the bottom circle. Now, that bottom circle over here, that's temporal, okay? The status on that bottom circle, it is temporal. Now, while we are walking here on earth, every time we commit sin, okay, we are out of the fellowship. I want you to, to know that. Every time you commit three personal sins, three categories of personal sins, what are those three categories of personal sins? Mental, verbal, and action. What's our, what are the examples of, of uh, mental attitude sin? Jealousy, hatred, envy, pride, arrogance. That's in your mind. That's in your mind. Once you think that, that's why in the, in the book of Proverbs, 23, 23 7 for what man think it in his heart that is you see no one can read your mind no one can read our mind except god but if you think evil if you think mental attitude sin you are out of the fellowship i want you to remember that okay oh you're automatically out of the fellowship of god okay personal sins what you lose is your condition, your fellowship with God. You never lose your top circle. You're still saved. That's your position. What you lose is your fellowship with God. You know, sort of you have your children. One of your children disobey you. So what you do, he or she is grounded. You time out. You know, we need to have a gap. <clears throat> because you disobey me. Okay, so that's what happened also in the bottom circle. You are out of the fellowship. Now, if you now that you are out of the fellowship, your status during that time, you are a carnal believer, a carnal believer. What is a carnal believer? He is a believer. He is saved. But during this time, you are walking in darkness. You are fleshly. You are worldly. The way you think. It's bad. The way you speak is bad. The way you act is all human viewpoint. It's not consistent to the word of God because you are out of that fellowship. Now here, during this time, what you receive, you will never receive the in time blessing. The blessing in time, what you receive if you are out of the fellowship is the DD, the divine discipline of God. 
Of course, you are the son of God. You are the daughter of God. God will chastise you in the book of Hebrews chapter 6. He will, he will send you some chastisement. That's what we receive in the, in the carnality. If your status is a carnal believer, first thing that you receive is self-induced misery. You will be miserable because of bad decision over bad decision over bad decisions in life. And that's what happened. That why your life is so miserable. It's, mis you know, it's self-induced misery. And after the self-induced misery, God will send you the divine discipline. The first category of, of divine discipline is the warning discipline to get your attention. And the second one of the divine discipline is we call this intensified discipline. You, It's going to be intense now. You're not listening. God is trying to get your attention. You know how many people, that's why I ask people, did you hear God? Did you hear God? And that's why you have to respond that because if you don't respond that call, you know, God is knocking at your door in the book of Revelation 3. If, he invi if you invited him to come into your life again, you know, to open that door, that's, a, that's not salvation passage. That's the divine discipline passage. Now here, if you do not get that call, the intensified discipline, what God wants you to do is to what we call this the sin unto death. The sin unto death is God will promote you early as possible because you know why? You are a believer, but you're not productive anymore. You're causing trouble. You're muddying the water. Instead of, you know, that's why I I always pray. Um because there's there there will there will be believers who do the right thing in the right way who are trying to clear out the water and there's another another believer over here they're trying to muddy the water we're trying to witness other people but there's some believer over here they broke that witnessing because people are watching so God what what he wants to do is to call you out early in your life can you imagine God wants to call you out early because you're not productive anymore. And we call this early out and early out. But before the judgment, before God's discipline will drop on your life, you change your mind. You change your mind. Remember the, uh, the prodigal son in the book of Luke? One of the son, the 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 older one was he stayed with his father but the younger one what what did he do after his father gave him his wealth his portion he squandered it he squandered it in the in the far country until he end up with in the in the pigs eating with the pigs and he realized this is not me i'm wealthy with my father my father's house is very wealthy this is not why what I eat. He go back to his father, and what happened? His father welcomed him from afar. So what we do before God get your attention, this is what we do. We go back to his fellowship by using the first John one nine. We call this operation recovery. Okay, operation recovery. We use the first John 1 9. That's why every time you commit sin, okay, remember this. Every time you commit sin, mental, verbal, and action, you are out of that. Did you guys get that so far? This is so important. I'm telling you, when I learned this, there will be no seminary will teach you this. I guarantee you. We've been through all that. For so many years, I only knew which seminary we can you can that will teach you this, in any churches. And I know who's those people who can teach you about this uh, doctrine. This is your life. At least it gives you awareness every time you commit sin. Oh Lord, I'm I'm out of the fellowship. I'm out of line. 
And then First John 1, 9 says, confess your sins. Plural, whatever you committed type of sins, all you have to do, the word homologio, it means to name, to cite, or acknowledge your sins. Did you guys get that? All you have to acknowledge to the Lord is the one that you remember, the sins that you remember. You know, maybe I commit sins that I, I forgot it already. All you have to acknowledge is the one that you remember. And on all those sins that you cannot even remember anymore, it's already been forgiven. That's how gracious is our God. All you have to name is the one that you remember because, you know, sometimes we, we forget things already. I cannot even remember what I did back back then. Too much. It's too much sins, you know. What God wants you to do is the only one that you remember is to confess the sins that you remember. And the known sins and also the unknown, it's forgiven. That's very amazing. That's the grace of God. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive you and to cleanse you for all unrighteousness. And then here you use the Roman 6. We call this reckoning. You have to consider that your, your old man is dead to sin. And Romans 6, 11, and that's why we go back over here. Let me show you how the Romans, you see that? How to go back to yield to the Holy Spirit. Romans 6, 6, you, had, you need to know something. Paul, he says, knowing this, that your old man, it's already crucified with him. You were crucified with the Lord. That's why you have to, to know that. That your old man has already been rendered inoperative. And now all you have to do is to reckon. Romans 6.11, there, there are two reckoning. You have to, the word reckon is to think. To think, to consider that your old man is dead. And you have to reckon your new man alive into the Lord in Christ. And in Romans 6.13, the word yield, that's very important. That's how you get back to the fellowship with God right over here. Okay. Um, if you have questions, just questions. Romans 6, Romans 6, 6, Romans 6, 11, and Romans 6, 13. The word in Romans 6, 13, it says you have to yield the members of our body into the Lord, into the Holy Spirit. That's how you go back to the green, to the bottom circle. <sighs> The word yielded is the 100% surrender to the Holy Spirit. Okay? <clears throat> Did you guys get that so far? This is so important. Once you know this, you're, you're, you're going to be uh, far advanced, very far advanced to, to other believer. It gives you awareness that every time you commit sin, you are. What happened? What's your status every time you commit sin? You are a carnal believer you are not walking in the light but you are walking in in darkness but here the the issue here is your volition in the bottom in your condition but the top circle is always permanent it's always permanent god loves you so much and here let's continue that the top circle um here ephesians 5 8 <coughs> what did paul say for we know, uh, for for you were you were sometimes darkness, but now you are in the light in the Lord. So what did he say? So walk as children of light. So walk as children of light. You are new now. Okay, you are a new person. In Second Corinthians five seventeen, this is one of the you know the topic that we always have. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is now, you are now a new creation. You are now a new you. There's a new you now, the new man inside of you. And that right there, part of that top circle, remember, part of that top circle is the moment you are saved, you receive 51 things the moment you are saved. I'm telling you, when you ask believers today, they don't even... They know some of that, maybe five, three, 
far up that maybe 10, that 51 things, the moment you are saved, that's part of the grace plan of God in your life. 51 things, irrevocable. 51 things, irrevocable. No one can take that out from you, not even God himself, because he promised that for you, not even Satan, okay? So this, these are the 13 judicial changes related to Adam's original sin. That's that changed already. Spiritual death is removed. The wrath of God is removed because you are now the child of God. Your spiritual blindness was removed. You can see now the light. Spiritual alienation was removed. You're not alien with God anymore. You know why? Philippians 2, what did Paul say? You are not citizens in, citizens in heaven. That's your citizenship. Very, that's very amazing. And Mithi, you're not enemy with God anymore because you know why you are a child of God. You are not condemned. You are righteous now before the Lord. You are transferred from darkness into light. You are now freed from the curse of the law. And over here, that the natural man, you are now a spiritual person. You're not perishing, but you, you know, uh, you're not perishing anymore because you are now, you have eternal life. Your sinner status changed. Now you can live holy in the sight of God. See, this this 51 things, this is so important. Because this is where you know who you are in Christ. And part of that 51 things, we have the nine factor related to our fellowship with the Holy God. So we have that redemption, reconciliation, justification, sanctification, propitiation. These are foundational doctrine that you need to know. You know, that this is very important. Now here, aside from that, we also have the nine works of the Holy Spirit. See, this is the job of the Holy Spirit. The moment you are saved, he, he regenerate you. Regeneration. You are now born again. Spiritual life. You know, you are now sealed. You know, when you receive a mail from the USPS, did you see that sealed from the post office? That means it's a guaranteed that it's going to go to this address. That means you are sealed by God. That means you're going to go to the address someday. You're going to go to heaven. That is a stamp that you have eternal life. Sealed by the Holy Spirit. Your life is already sealed. You cannot lose your salvation. That's why it's it's so important that the new convert, you need to, we need to arm them right away about this foundational truth so that when we go through life, there are going to be a lot of temptation when you go through life. You think you lost your salvation. You think God is far away now. You think God is not with you anymore. No, that's just you. Listen, people change, circumstances change, but God never changes. You change. God didn't change. He did not change. We are just, you know, we are just curious about about our sins. That we commit so many sins, we thought we lost our salvation. You never lost your top, the top circle. What we lose is our bottom, bottom circle, our, our fellowship with God. All you have to do is just go back, regain again. <clears throat> and earnest, I love this word. You know, um, last week I've been through so much study about this word too, earnest. The, the, the word earnest is the word deposit. God made a deposit on you already. You know, when you, when you buy a house, you need to put a deposit. Whatever transaction you have nowadays, you need to put a deposit to make sure that you will own it. You will own that. What God's deposit for every believer is His Holy, Holy Spirit. God deposited his Holy Spirit in inside of you. You're not going to the lake of fire anymore. That's for sure. See, you arm yourselves already that this is me in the Lord. This is me now. 
This is who I am in the Lord. 51 things. 51 things. Before, when, when I used to go to the youth camp, all I can remember is I'm saying. So only one thing that I, I, I hold on to that passage, that God saved me. I start with that number one, save. But I didn't realize that there are 51 things the moment that you are saved. See, you have the indwelling Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit lives inside of you now. That's what John says. Greater is he, the Holy Spirit, that lives inside of you than of this world. He is greater than Satan. Greater is he who lives in you than of this world. The one of this world is who rules this world is say, Satan who rules this word, world. Now, the one who is greater than Satan, John says, is the one inside of you. But the problem of many believers, they don't know how to access that power. And we're going to go through that. We're going to go through that. It seems like we're powerless. It seems to, it seems like Satan is winning all, to, all the time. It seems like we always get knocked out in every round. But we're going to study that. That's why we are here. Bible study is so important. That's why I, I, I always, every time I touch this topic, I always tell my listener, we need to go beyond the uh, amen, pastor. Amen. Hallelujah. We need, you know, we need to go beyond the kumbaya, kumbaya. We need to think now. When you study Paul, you need to think, okay? We need to put this in our frame of, reference so that we can recall this now that every time you face your life every time you face the circumstances of life or maybe you have family members that will ask questions about the truth that you know you will remember this maybe someone will ask you you know um what benefit do i have if i believe your lord the lord jesus christ this is your benefit like i told you last week i asked some of my friend that he is islam i got my friend he is buddhism i asked my friend he is from the shinto in any other religions in the world i asked them what benefit do i have in that religion because i will tell you what benefit you could have if you are in the lord you have 51 things imagine god loves you so much now that you know who you are in the Lord, now over here we have access to God. Before we need in the Old Testament, they need to have a, a high priest. They need to tell the high priest about their sin, and the high priest need to go to the Holy of Holies to to confess their sins. But now, in the book of Hebrews, chapter four, what did he say? You can come boldly to the throne room of grace. You don't have to share your problem to me. Go to God. Go to God. Because you have access to God now. And that's the picture when the Lord Jesus Christ was hanged on the cross, the veil was torn apart. That means you don't need to have high priest anymore because you know who is the high priest? is the Lord Jesus Christ now. You don't have to share your problems to other people because the next thing you know, <laughs> it's like a satellite. People are just, you know, you, 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 you tell the Lord directly because you know why? You have private life before the Lord now. This is our private life before the Lord. Your priesthood is your private life before the Lord. <clears throat> you have privacy before the Lord. Your ambassadorship is that's your uh, life before your fellow man. So you have access to God the Father. You know, pray right there, right away. God will hear you right away. Because you know why? Prayer is only for the believer. When I say that, a lot of people, you know, ring their ears on me. <clears throat> because they are praying. If you're, not, if you're not a believer, God will never hear your prayer. Because you know why? You are not the son or the daughters. You don't have a personal relationship with the Lord. That's why prayer is only for the believer. The first thing the unbeliever do is to be saved. Now they have a personal relationship with the Lord. God will hear you because you know why? God will hear your prayer because you know why? You are related to the Lord now. 
you have a relationship with the Lord. See, access to God, you are adapted. That's very amazing. Once you are adapted, remember Romans, Romans custom of adaption. If we study that, that's very deep. But this is how Paul get the adaption. That means if you are adapted by a Roman citizen, you can have the inher. You are an heir. You you can have the inheritance from the Caesars of Rome. That's very amazing. So we are adapted by the Lord, by God. But this is what happened now. Since we are in the Lord, we are heirs with God, adapted son of God. We have inheritance. We may not have inheritance here on earth. That's fine. That is fine. You don't have no land, no home, no shelter, you know. But once we go to heaven, that's where our inheritance, God will bestow or convey all those inheritance. And aside from that, we have 20 status privileges of the royal family in second and first Peter 2 9. Now you can have this. We have the pamphlet on this before. We just we hand it out. I even have a copy for this. I make a copy some of those before. Now, if you need a copy, I can send that to you. Okay. It's gonna be online. online. Yeah, it's gonna be online. You can go to the YouTube and then you know get that one. Now, here again, uh this right here, 51 things at the moment of salvation. That's why Paul, he says in the in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, you are complete in him. There is nothing that God can do anymore. What else do you need? What else do you need? He, he already gave it everything to you. When he said in the book of Colossians chapter 2, verse 10, you are complete in him. Complete in the Lord. But the problem is we are ignorant about this, um, this uh, truth that we have, 51 things. We are ignorant about this thing. Now, ignorant comes in, in two ways. First, you, you know, you are ignorant because you are uninformed. You don't know it. The second one, you are ignorant because you rejected it. You are negative to the word of God. See, we can help that. That's why we have Bible study. I don't mind going back again and again. That's my job. That's why Paul, he says, to, to speak this thing again and again is, is no problem for me. That's what he says in the Philippians. Again, this is my job. To do it again and again. You know, same thing as we go for uh, for when we train somebody in a basketball, we, we need to shoot the ball so many times until you master it. You master that shooting of the basketball. The same thing in the word of God, I want you to, to master it, to master it. That's why review, review, review. Even me, myself, I always go back to review again and again. The more you review yourselves, that what you learn, you can get something else more and more, and it reinforces on what you learned in the previous learning, you know. It, it reinforces, it gives more deep meaning about, you know, the Holy Spirit will give you the aha moment, the aha, you know. And um, Colossians 2.10, you are complete in Him, in the Lord. And again, so many believers, when you ask believers today, how many of you you know about 51 things okay that's why when we talk about paul you need to know this and in every in every topic of this is a certain subject that to study we cannot go this for just one night because when 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 we study about uh, the doctrine of firstborn the doctrine of uh son of light that, that's another topic that we have to study. It's not just, okay, just one, one, one title. Uh, for example, when we study about the doctrine of ambassadorship, that's a big study. The, one of this is a big study. That's why it is imperative. It is imperative that you don't have to miss the Bible study. Because like I said, I don't know when are we going to go back to this again. Because there's so many topics that we can go through, you know. So 
Now, that's one of my encouragement also. So that's the 20, 51 things, the moment you believe in the Lord. You receive that. And that's why here, and also the believer on the top circle, we share what, what Christ have. The believer shares the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, the first John. And the believer shares his righteousness. The believer shares the destiny of the Lord. That's predestination. The believer shares the election of the Lord. See, if he's the son, we are the son, sonship of the Lord. See, imagine, because you know why? We are in, in Christ. We are in Christ. Ne there will be never in the human history that, had the, that has that title, except the church age believer, you and me. We are in Christ. Daniel. Sadrach, Meshach, Abednego, Elijah, they're not in Christ. Abraham, they're not in Christ. Noah, they're, he's not in Christ. They're believers, but they're not in Christ. You are special. We are very special species in this world. We are a very special species in this world. No one expected this. Jesus never even mentioned this. We are inserted in the human history that's very amazing if he's son we are son if he is the heir we are heir we, we we are part of airship you know what's an airship you share the inheritance together remember that god the father he when when jesus christ ascended to heaven what did the god the father says sit down at my right hand that's an idiomatic expression of the Lord Jesus Christ, God the Father is giving him a rank. God promoted the Lord Jesus Christ in the highest rank. And what rank that God the Father gave to the Lord Jesus Christ? When he said, sit down at my right hand, he is giving him the rank of the King of Kings, and the Lord of Lords, Jesus Christ never had that title before until the, the cross. He won the strategic victory in the cross. When he ascended to heaven with his resurrection body, God the Father told the Lord Jesus Christ, sit down at my right hand. The word right hand is power. It stands for power. And God the Father, he bestows everything to our Lord Jesus Christ. That's amazing. So he is, he has the air. We are the airship with the Lord. We are, he is sanctified. We are sanctified. He is the high priest. We are the royal priest. <clears throat> See, he has the kingdom because he is the king of kings and the Lord of Lord. We are part of that kingship with the Lord Jesus Christ in that palace. That's you now. You are a royalty. You are a part of the royal blood. You don't have to be in England to become a royalty. Spiritually, you are an aristo, aristocrat, believer, aristocracy, because you are serving the king. And of course, in every aristocracy, there is a system that we have to follow, a protocol to lead the way as a royal priest believer see we share these things with our lord jesus christ and aside from that in romans in the top circle romans 8 38 for i am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of god paul was talking about our eternal security of the believer no one can separate you from the love of god i love that if someone will tell you you can lose your salvation give them this passage that no one no nor any other creature shall be able to separate you from the love of god okay which is in christ jesus our lord and the other one in john 10 28, this is an eternal security of the believer because there will be out there will tell you that you can lose your salvation. And you over here, you're doubting about your salvation too. Am I still saved? You know, I have my friend, 
are you a believer? I used to be. What kind of answer is that? Used to. Are you a Christian? I used to be. What happened now? I heard that so many times. They will tell you that I used to be a Christian and you know, and what happened? No, there no, there will be no used to be before or back then, but no, if you're a believer, you're a believer a hundred percent. What happened to you, you are just become a carnal because of sin. The top circle never removed. You're still there. You still have a personal relationship with the Lord. That's why those believers who, who keep on saying, are you a Christian? I used to be a Christian. There, no, there will be no used to be. You need to make sure. Because they don't know about this truth. Solid to back up that, you know. That's why in John 10, 28, John, he said, I gave uh, and I gave unto them eternal life. And I gave to them what? Eternal life. The life that will be no ending forever and ever. And the second phrase, what did John say? And they, believers, you and me, never perish, neither shall any man pluck them out in the hands of God. No one can take you out from the hands of God, not even Satan, because you are secure in the hands of God. Did you love that? Do you love that? That you know that no matter what happened in your life, God's holding you. You're not holding him. He's holding you. Okay? This is the picture on that one. This is you, the left hand. This is God. No matter you let go with God, he's still holding you. Do you guys see that? Sometimes we let go of God. God still got you. Sometimes we don't know that, but he still got you. But sometimes we need to go back to hold him back again. Okay? Sometimes there will be time in our lives that, you know, we let go of God. But listen, God didn't let go of you. He still got you. That's amazing. Okay? So that's part of our eternal security of the believer. That's the top circle. It's better to know that. Now, we go back again. The cross is the moment you are saved, the Holy Spirit puts you in the top circle. That's permanent. Never lose your salvation. Over here, we have our fellowship in time, the bottom circle. Every time we commit sin, what happened? You are out of the fellowship. And your status, when you are out of the fellowship, you are a carnal believer. You are a fleshly, worldly you know, a uh, believer. And now you have to go back to the fellowship using First John 1, 9 and the book of Romans 6, 11 and 13. Now the plan of God, let's go back to the plan of God, is divided into how many phase? Three phase. Phase one is salvation. That's God's plan for your life. That's the first thing he wants you to know. He wants you to be part of, your, of his plan. See, he has a plan for your life. And the second one, now we enter in the plan of God. We are now in phase two plan of God. What is the phase two plan? Is the Christian walk of life or the Christian way of life. So the Christian way of life in phase two plan of God, either you in in the door of death. We don't know what age, manner of death are we going to face one day. Or the rapture of the church will occur maybe tomorrow, today. Or the next week. So that's the phase two plan of God. We'll end up either when we die physically, the door of death, or the rapture of the church. And the next phase of the plan of God is we call this Eter eternity. So that's the three phases of the plan of God. Now that we are saved, then what now? Okay. This is now the bottom circle. The bottom circle now, the, the, the bottom circle, this is in the, the book of John, 1 John 1, 5. This is what we call the general rule. John says here, this is then is the message 
which we have heard of him, God the Father, and declared unto you that God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. We call this general rule. God is, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. <clears throat> now he countered that in verse 6. If we say that we have fellowship with him and we walk in darkness, we walk in carnality, listen, we lie and do not do and do not the truth. Do not have the truth. And in verse 7, he says, but if we, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, See, God is light, and in him there is no darkness at all. See, if we walk in the light, as if God is in the light, he said that already, that's the general rule, we have fellowship with God. We have fellowship with one another, and the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all sin. Now, if we say, in going back to verse 6, if we see that we have fellowship and walking in darkness, do you think you have fellowship with God? No. Because you are walking in darkness. You are out of the fellowship, bottom circle. But he says here in verse 7, if we walk in the light as he, God the Father, because he says God is light and in him, there is no darkness at all. You know, believers love to be in darkness because, oh, I don't want them to see me to do all these things because you know why? There is what we call in the book of Hebrews, the pleasures of sin. You love doing that sin. I don't know what kind of sin that you go back. That's why the book of Hebrews loves, he says, the sin that easily beset you. There's a sin that you really love to go back in. You hide that with the Lord. You know, I have this Lord and God wants to take that out from you. Now, if you are in the light as he is in the light, you have fellowship with God. You know why the reason why God did not answer your prayer? Because you are out of the fellowship. You need to be in the sphere of the spirit, in the fellowship with God so that God can hear you. You know, if you are out of the fellowship, all you have to do is all you have is the uh, human good. God will, God is not impressed on what you do. God doesn't even care about what you think if you are out of the fellowship. What he wants you to do is you need, he cares about you if you are in the sphere of the spirit, in the fellowship with God. We call that experiential spiritual believer. Now he says here in Galatians 5.16, this I say, as I say, Paul, then walk in the spirit and ye shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. Now, I want you to, to emphasize that word. If you have your phone with you, go to Galatians 5.16. Now, some of your translation says by, okay? But the... The, the Greek word there is walk in the spirit of the spirit. Who has the translation that says by? Galatians 5.16. Go in your phone because uh, let me explain something. <clears throat> we go through this before. Did you see that by? Yeah. Who has the by? You have by? Walk by the spirit? Walk by. One, two, three. Okay. So that translation is wrong. In the Greek, it's in. Okay. Now, listen, this is what happened. Because uh, back then, the word by, see, this is the case. Okay. The case, C-A-S-E. <clears throat> the word by is, we call this instrumental case. Instrumentality case. Walk in the spirit of the spirit is, we call this locative case. We get the locative case 
in and out. Okay. Many believers believe that if you are in the sphere of the spirit, the spirit is controlling your life. That's where we get the word control. No one is controlling you except you yourself. You are in control of your volition. Okay. For example, I'll give you the example. The word instrumentality. You, you have three translations which says by, right? So if I'm walking with a crutches, if you know, if one of my leg is kind of my left leg cannot walk and I'm walking by the crutches. I'm walking by the crutches. The problem of that is every time you commit sin, who are you going to blame? Because who are in control? It's the Holy Spirit. You blame the crutches. That's the by. That, that is wrong. In the Greek, we call this instrumentality case, intr instrumental case. But the reality here is the word walk in the sphere of the spirit. We call this locative, location. We were, are you in or out? Are you in the car or out of the car? That's why here, the walk in the sphere of the spirit, is it's your location. Every time you are out of the fellowship, you sin. If you, are, you, you go back to inside of the fellowship, you use the operation recovery. Did you guys get that so far? That's very important. That 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 word right there, that two little word that separates so many uh, dispensational before. Because of that, we are not in control. The Holy Spirit is not in control. You are in control about your volition. And over here, First uh, Corinthians three one and brethren. Um, I could not speak to you, and I, brethren, could not speak unto you as a spiritual. Remember, the Corinthian people, they are a carnal believer. They are saved. Paul is happy for them that they are saved, sanctified. But as far as their life is concerned, they are skunk. They are not, they're not productive before the Lord. But be, we, we are so thankful for the Corinthian believer because Paul, when Chloe gave that letter to Paul, Paul, we have so many issues in Corinthians. We have the issue of division, marriage, divorce, incest, idolatry, you know, paganism, a lot of those, you know, issue. And Paul, he trying to clear out every issues in the Corinthian church. That's why Paul, he says, I could not speak to you as a spiritual, <clears throat> but as unto carnal people. You need to have, he says, you need to have as a babes in Christ, you need to have milk, milk doctrine. We need to start with the milk doctrine for the carnal believer. See, that's, that's what happened. Um, the carnal believer, they need to have the foundation, the milk doctrine first. That, that's very amazing because like you know uh, when when you when you grow we start as, as a babyhood in a Christian way of life the more we grow in the Christian way of life the more we strengthen our faith in the Lord and we need to we need to have that word of God a solid food you pass that milk now <coughs> and that's why you once you reach that babyhood, and now you reach in that spiritual maturity in your life. And that's bottom circle. Over here in the bottom circle, uh, there's some terminology that we use. That bottom circle, sometimes we use that, we call this lithosphere. Remember, God is light. You walk in the light, not in darkness. Sometimes we call it the sphere of the spirit, Galatians 5, 16. Or we call this the divine dinosphere. The word dyna is power sphere, the power. That's where you get the power. If you are out of the fellowship, you are a carnal believer. You are powerless. You are living in your flesh. And sometimes we think that God is still with us. You're on your own. 
And sometimes we call this the lab complex. And we're going to continue this next week, the bottom circle. And we're going to study about what is the bottom circle. <coughs> because here, when we get saved, so now what? What happened next? And what's God's plan for our lives after we are now saved? What's the deal in the Christian way of life? And what's the goal in every Christian believer? I'm telling you, you ask your friends, they don't even know what's the goal. I asked some of my friends. It's very sad. Out of 10, there's only one who knows the goal of the Christian life is what? The Christian life is to become exactly like Jesus Christ in his humanity. The character of the Lord. Not just to go to the church and um, go with your friends and, you know, whoever that is, you just go over there, sing a song. We've been there. We've been there before. I've been there. I've been through so many youth camps, uh, conferences, and um, what do you call that? Uh, retreats, cottage prayer. You know, we've been through all that. But it came to the point in my life that it's empty. What's really the goal? But the goal is to become exactly like Christ in his humanity. We're going to continue this next week, okay? So thank you guys once again. Um, again, go back to that. If you have questions, give me give me some questions. Um, email me, uh, text me, or message me, okay? Uh, again, this, this stuff right here, this study, <coughs> it goes beyond. Um, I don't know when are we going to go back to this study again. That's why we. I'm going to make this, um, I slow down on this one to make it through. You know, I don't want nobody to leap behind. I don't want nobody to be left out. I want everybody to learn this. I want everybody to learn this thing, okay? Uh, for all those people who listen to our YouTube channel also, thank you for your diligence studying the word. And if you have questions, if this thing is new to you, don't take it out in your uh, frame of reference. Just put that into your back burner of your soul. And I will explain on whatever you're, you need to be explained of, you know, terminology. That's one thing that we need to remember, okay, the term. With your heads bow and let's pray. Father, thank you so much for the privilege of studying your word. Thank you, Father, for giving us the time today <coughs> that we have the the beautiful day, Father. What a beautiful day to be alive. To see the night again, and to see the sunshine in the morning. It just represents your glorious character, Father. Again, Paul, he says in the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 3, Blessed are God the Father in the heavenly. Blessed are God and Father who blessed us, blesses us in the heavenly places. That's very amazing. That's how wealthy you are in the Lord. God opened a bank account in you in heaven. 51 things. The portfolio of invisible assets that you have. God gives you the, we have equal privilege and opportunity the moment we are saved. But the problem is our walk now. That's, that's the condition. How you walk in this life. Are you walking in darkness or are you walking in the light? But thank God that he always have our attention. Thank God for giving us the, the alarm every time we are out of the fellowship. Father, thank you for my family, loved ones here tonight. Friends, and especially for those people who's not here tonight. Father, bless them. And for those uh friend of ours and your brothers our brothers and sisters who listen to the youtube channel let the holy spirit speaks in their heart father that's why paul he says in the in the book of Ephesians, i pray that the that the eyes of your heart may be open father thank you so much for tonight we we pray for this nation the united states of america especially for the coming presidency of the leader of this country father you are in control. We, no matter what happened, Father, you always, you're always in control. 
thank you so much for guiding us, for, for leading us to this point. I pray for my family, the health, uh, the financial, everything, Father, and especially for the protection that we receive every day. Thank you so much, Father. And we give you this, the glory and honor for Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Mm -hmm. Thank you, guys. Let me see. Let me close this one really quick. Mm -hmm.